A few years ago, I did a small Ultramarines project for Horus Heresy, where I created a red marked force, and I wanted to do something a little bit different with the blue. So I decided to try using uh, a clear paint, in this case Tamiya Clear Blue. So to celebrate the release of Indomitus for the newest edition of 40k, we thought we'd take a look at a different way to approach painting the Ultramarines. So to begin with, I'm going to give the whole model a coat of Scale 75 Black Metal through the airbrush, and I've thinned this about one to one with light colour thinner. I just want to make sure I've covered all the surfaces with this metal, particularly the shadows. If we're using clears, we really want a reflective surface underneath. Now I can pick out a few of my highlights, and for this I'm using Vallejo Metal Colour Series Dark Aluminium. It's a really lovely paint to use through the airbrush. I'm just focusing on all the normal areas that you would expect to catch the light. I'm trying to keep that light source consistent, and then when I do the rear of the model, just pick another light source again. And then a final highlight with Vallejo Model Air Steel, just picking out the very highest points, the head, the shoulder pads, top of the backpack, that type of thing. When you're working with clears, you don't have the option to later on add any edge highlights as you would in a flat colour scheme. So if you like that style, you need to put the edge highlights in at this stage. So I've just taken the Vallejo Model Air Steel, and this time with a brush, I'm just hitting any of the areas I want to draw attention to. So in this case the face, maybe the hands, anything that I think will really catch the light. This is the first pass of colour with the clears, and you can see there's barely any difference on the model. It's really, really important when you're painting with a clear scheme that you thin the colour down a lot. In this case, I've thinned it probably six or seven drops of thinner to one drop of paint, and I want to build the layers up really, really slowly, letting them dry in between. And the reason for this is we get a much more interesting final colour. So here you can see this is eight layers later, and we've now got this wonderful blue, which has got a lot of depth to it, a lot of shadow, a lot of highlight. Whilst this effect is really cool, one complication you might come across with this if you're trying to paint a whole army, and after all this is an army painting video, is to get a consistent colour across your force. So I've found when I've painted clear forces in the past that I've tried to get everything that I can built and painted to at least this stage in one or two sittings, and then I'll work on the units individually afterwards. It just helps maintain that nice consistent colour throughout. Now I'll give the model a quick coat of Vallejo polyurethane gloss varnish through the airbrush. This is to prepare it for the next stage for decals and for pin washing. So to pin wash I'm using Citadel Contrast Paint Black Templar. It's a really nice colour, it's a really easy paint to work with for this process. I'm just going around all the panel lines, all the details, bringing in that contrast and definition. And because I've glossed the model, I've also put the decals on at this stage too. I've hit the model with a coat of satin varnish. I made my own mix up, and this was four parts matte to one part gloss. And you can see, by taking that really harsh shine off the metallics, we've suddenly got a really cool looking armour colour. I've made sure to leave a little bit of gloss in the deepest shadows just to help build more contrast. It's completely up to you obviously for the finish of your model, but I didn't want them to look like the Jolly Rancher Marines. At this stage, I've blacked out all the other details, just using Vallejo Model Color Black, or whatever your go-to is. Now for the connective parts of the armor, the first highlight I'm gonna use is Vallejo Model Color Dark Gray. And just picking out the detail. And then on those areas of the model that will, in my opinion, catch the most light, I'm going to add a second highlight. In this case, Vallejo Model Color French Mirage Blue. I'm not going to do this on all of the black parts, just those that I want to draw a little attention to. Now for the leather parts on the model, a base coat with Games Workshop Rhinox Hide. It's a fantastic base colour to work with, a great consistency, great coverage. And just apply this to all the pouches, the grip on the chainsaw, that type of thing. Now our first highlight over this is going to be Scale 75 Brown Leather. 
I've watered this down ever so slightly. And I'm going to cover 90% of the area, just leaving the Rhinox hide in the darkest areas of shadow. If you have a look at some reference photos for belts and leather bags, that type of thing, you'll see where you should leave the areas of shadow. And then our final highlight for the leather is scale 75 Gobi Brown. And here I'm just adding it to all of the edges like you would if you traditionally edge highlighted, but I'm also trying to introduce some scratches. So I put the odd scratch in the middle of the pouch itself, but then I'll also, as I'm edge highlighting, go backwards and forwards a lot to try and create a little bit of texture. The reason I like to use these scale 75 paints is they have a really matte finish, which gives us a nice level of contrast against that metallic sheen on the armor. For the silver areas of the model, I'm just going to base coat them with GW Iron Warrior. And then as a highlight, I'm going to go straight to Vallejo Model Air Steel. I'm just going to pick out those brightest points. For the gold on the model, this is probably the second most impactful colour on there. So I'm going to base coat it with scale 75 decayed metal. So it's a lovely sort of metallic brown colour and I use it as a base coat for a lot of different metal colours that I work with. Then for my highlight I'm going to use scale 75 dwarven gold. It's a nice warm gold colour. And when I'm only working with two colours for the metal I want there to be quite a big step between the base colour and the highlight colour. I'm just going to pick out the very raised edges those that would catch the light the most. So we can see here where the light's reflecting off at the top and along the bottom there. And all I'm going to do is effectively colour in where I can see that light reflecting. And on this one, just follow where you can see the natural light bouncing off anyway. For the eyes, I could have gone red for a bit of contrast, but red's for baddies, so I'm going green and I'm base coating with Vallejo Game Air Dark Green. And then my highlight underneath is GW Moot Green. Again, it's a nice big jump between that base colour and the highlight, which helps it look that much more reflective. And just prime be neat and tidy. If you need to tidy it up, just use your dark green again. And the white dot that obviously we now have to do in every video with lenses. And he's done it first time, honestly. Okay, last little bit of detail now. You can do a bit of battle damage. Battle damage often doesn't show up quite as well on the metallic schemes or the clear schemes, but I've picked a color here, scale 75 black leather, which has a really, really matte finish. It's sort of a dark browny purple color. And this should at least give us a little bit of contrast. I'm just going in with my brush and focusing on those areas of the model that are going to take the most damage. I haven't gone overboard at all with battle damage on this, but if that is something that interests you, it's a particular passion of mine and something I do a lot of articles on for Patreon. What we can do is look at areas of the model, for instance where the white decals are on, and focus a little bit of the battle damage on there, just so it shows up a bit more. And then using Vallejo Model Air Steel again. Just going to give the odd scratch, just where I've already put a bit of that dark brown colour. Now we just need to do a little bit of damage on the chain sword and the bolt weapon as well. So I'll grab a bit of sponge, take a little bit of the Iron Warrior, touch off most of the excess, and then just aim for those edges pressing gently against the model. And those areas of really big wear and tear you can just start to build it up slowly and you can get a really cool effect. We're effectively highlighting the black using the silver. But I said I wasn't going to do too much damage, so we'll stop there. So here we have him. I think that Clear schemes for armies can be incredibly impactful on the tabletop, particularly if we're playing somewhere where maybe the lighting's not brilliant, 
and you can't pick out all those wonderful subtleties you see underneath your painting lamp. It's a really efficient way to get a lot of models done. And I'm actually working on a Dark Angel project myself because I enjoyed doing this video so much. Tamiya clears are fantastic and probably my favourite to use. They are fairly limited though when it comes to the range of colours. And do make sure when you're using them that you use Tamiya thinner. And if you'd like to see more schemes using this clears technique, then let us know in the comments and I'll put up a few different products you can use. I hope you've enjoyed this first video from us covering the new Indomitus release. We're going to have a lot more for you coming up over the next two weeks. If you did, then hit that like button. And to make sure you don't miss out on any of the other videos coming up soon, hit subscribe as well. And I'll see you in the next one.